this is Jody Salvo, and welcome back to the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition podcast. Today on our show, I'm joined once again with Tuscarawas County Prevention Specialist from Ohio Guidestone, Tammy Thacker, Diana Smith, and Hannah Yoder. Um, thank you, ladies, for coming back. Um, well, I'm looking forward to another wonderful conversation with y'all. Um, there's a reason we brought you back today. Um you know, these next couple podcasts with Anti-Drug Coalition, we're really kind of focusing on this unplanned, unexpected time we have at home with our families with this stay-at-home mandate. And, um, you know, from the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition standpoint, um, something that's very important to us is the influence parents have on young people when it comes to healthy decisions, when it comes to substance use, um, just in the development of our young people and our children. Um, and one of the things that I am seeing each day is um, just a lot of alcohol promotion at this time. Um, some of it's just fun, but um, I think it. when I'm seeing some of the Facebook posts and comments from adults, it, it kind of makes me take a pause each day. And I'll just give you an example, the wine with the wine. I mean, it has to make us smile a little bit, this two o'clock time where people are convening to get their news each day. But um, I'm also concerned about some of the messages that that's sending to our young people. So that's why we brought you back today. So what I'd like to do is just have a conversation with y'all, um, your prevention specialist, meaning you're focused on substance use and um, really the protection of our young people and building them up to become amazing, amazing contributors um, to our community and to our society as a whole. So welcome back. And I'm going to start with Tammy Thacker. Um, just, just kind of touching base on some of these thoughts about being at home and messages, um, we're sending to our young people and what parents might be needing to be mindful of at this time. Well, Di <clears throat> excuse me, well, Diana and I were talking about earlier, she had mentioned that alcohol sales is up uh, 70, what was it, Diana, 75%? 75%. 75%. Wow. So with this being a really stressful time, that um, kind of sends a message. It sends a message that, you know, people are drinking more in their homes and, you um, Children are seeing that. So in, in our taking to the schools, we do talk a lot about alcohol drinking. Okay. You know, we keep in mind they're only in fourth grade, so we want to make everything age appropriate. But uh, we want the, the students to understand that, you know, the legal age of drinking is 21. So if someone does want to drink alcohol and they are over the age of 21, that's an adult decision, you know, and we want them to understand the difference between uh, mom and dad going out, having a glass of wine for an anniversary is their choice because they're an adult. But someone who basically can't get through the day without drinking, who, you know, doesn't live up to their responsibilities, can't hold down a job, that's someone that possibly has an alcohol problem. So especially during this time, because this is a very stressful time, mm -hmm. you know, and people... You know, I wish I could say had a magic wand and say, you know, poof, no more stress, but stress is a part of life and you have to learn how to deal with your stress in a healthy and safe way. So just to name a couple of the activities that we do, we do something with bubble gum. And uh, this is in that taking us to take it to the schools program. It's exactly right. And then um, the lessons actually we're talking about tobacco and vaping, but we also bring in addiction with that. So we do something that I give each student a piece of bubble gum. Well, you know, they all like bubble gum and they want to blow bubbles. So, but when I give it to them, they're not allowed to touch it. So, and then after a while I'll say, you know, do you, do you want blow bubbles with it? And, you know, they all say, yes, yes. And then uh, I'll say, how about uh, put it, just put it in your mouth, but you can't, can't chew it. And then after a while, they can take maybe two, three little chews of it. So, you know, after a while, all that sugar and, you know, obviously bubble gum isn't going to hurt you. But, you know, it's it's I'm kind of tempting them in a way. So if you're a period of time when I actually let them chew that bubble gum and I'll say, what happens to bubble gum after a while? It just loses its flavor. It's just like plastic in their mouth. So I kind of tie that in with addiction because addiction, you know, first can kind of start out feeling good, but then it loses its flavor and you move on to something else. You want more, more, more. Okay. So, and then we also do something, um, this is probably one of my favorite ones. It's called a pin family. And it's a pin family because they're clothes pins. Okay. 
<clears throat> so we have mom and sometimes I'll put stepdad in there because as I said before, our families are all different. So then we have preschool, peen, kindergarten, Kate and dude. Dude is a high school boy and they were having stress. Dad was having a job loss, which many of the, that is happening today, currently today. So that is causing stress. Then you have dude, dude who, you know, missed out on high school graduation, wants to go to college. Uh, that's, you know, everything's kind of being held back. Sports, sports is all, you know, finished up for the year. So that's very stressful. So dude and dad have made the choice to try drugs and alcohol. So we talked about how that affects the family, you know, during that stressful time. And it kind of has the family go off balance. So, you Tammy, know, let me ask you, fourth graders, um, when you're talking to them about alcohol, um, what are their responses when you're having these conversations? About alcohol? Yeah. They, they see it in their families. They say, you know, parties going on on the weekends and, you know, family gatherings. And, you know, they don't understand. They don't understand the difference between adult decision making and the reason being because their brains aren't developed. Okay. So, and that's one thing that we really want to stress with that, with the alcohol that, you know, that your brain isn't developed to, and that's medically proven to about, what is it, 25, 24, 25. 25. Yeah. So they don't need to put something in their brain that there's something in their body, you know, that's going to cause a lot of problems with their body and their brain, especially. Now I've worked with young people myself in the past. Um, <clears throat> I find they have a lot of questions about alcohol at those younger ages. Why do you think that is? Any of y'all can feel free to jump in. I think a lot that we're hearing, especially in the schools with the younger kids, is, well, it calms my mom down. My mom will say, I'm just going to go have a drink and relax my nerves because you're getting on my nerves. So when the kids hear that over and over and over again, they think that that's a coping mechanism. They think that, oh, okay, so something's bothering me. It's okay to go have a drink because it calms my mom down, so it calms me down. So what we have to do is we have to express to the kids that it's not really the alcohol that's calming them down. It's walking away from the situation, and we teach them how to deal with it in a healthy way. Okay. So I think what they, the kids hear from their parents is – how they interpret alcohol is okay because I said they're hearing, well, you're getting on my nerves. I'm going to go have a drink or I'm going to go have a cigarette or, or I had a rough day. Or I, yeah, I had a rough day or I'm going to go out with my <clears throat> friends. They don't realize that you can go out with your friends and not drink. They think that every time you go out with your friends, you've got to drink to have fun. Okay. Now, do you think that's a byproduct of kind of the world we live in right now? Um, because clearly we've had problems with addiction um, at all time high in the last couple of years, um, whether it's prescription drug, um, I, clearly we're seeing methamphetamines in our community. Um, do you think substance use just becomes more part of our young people that they're hearing more about it or addiction? Just curious. My personal opinion, just with the young people alone, a lot of them, it's everyday life. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it's, when I was growing up, it was something that you hardly ever seen. And now it's their norm to them seeing mom, dad, sister, brother, aunt, uncle drink all the time. That's a norm. They don't know that there's, it, that's not normal. Okay. Tammy, I see you now. Not yeah. In your head they as well. think, you know, and just because mom and dad or someone else in the family's doing it, they have to realize that they don't have to do that. Yeah. You know, they can get through a, a birthday or a Memorial Day picnic or something without alcohol, yeah. you know, and there's, and, and, and I'm going to go back to the stress thing. There are positive ways you can deal with your stress. So we talk about a lot about that different things, you know, pets, music, reading a book. Uh, every week we stress, stress the importance of a safe person, have a safe person at school, safe person at home. Sure. If they go to church, their youth pastor, Sunday school teacher, you know, if they see a counselor outside of, outside of the school, you know, that's something that we stress very, very much. You know, we also express to the kids, you can't have anyone safer than your local police officer. Yeah. I think it's very, very important that we let the kids know, you know, they're not out to do bad things. They're out to keep you safe. And at any point in time that you can go to a police officer and they're the safest person out there. Now, I think this really is an interesting conversation because one of the things you brought up is when I was growing up, 
the world looked very differently. And I'm a little bit older as well. And I do think things have changed when I work with young people. Um, Back in the day, I'm just going to be real, real about this. There were people identified as those people use and these people don't. Okay. I I think there were definitely lines drawn in the sand. Um, I think as, as times have changed, addictions change, drugs have changed, potency has changed. And I don't think it's this person is using drugs. I think a lot of our society um, uses substances for a whole bunch of different reasons. I think in the past, it might have been a little bit more curiosity. Um, And I think as life has gotten busier and more stressful, I think a lot of times it's become more of coping mechanisms, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, where young people might initially, first of all, we're inundated with it. You know, we have... It's everywhere. Yeah, it's on our music, it's on our videos, it's on every way we recreate is Americans. It's on our, um, you know, transitional periods in time. This is how we celebrate. This is how we hit milestones in our society. And I think that's changed a little bit in our society. But with that being changed... Um, I think young people just feel alcohol substance use is more just accepted or the norm. Yeah, it's Uh, more acceptable. It's their norm. It's their everyday life. I'm looking at the young person in the room. Hannah, I I saw kind of a face. What do you what do you think? And you're probably processing what I'm just saying. Yes, I was just listening and processing and remembering, you know, that 75 percent alcohol sales increase and how shocking that is. And it's, it's it's a big indicator of just the stress that everyone is under and our young people are particularly at risk. I think that, well, we actually um, put out a survey in a city in Tuscarawas County and the youth reported very high levels of academic stress. I think now, you know, teens are more expected to go to college, you know, that expectation to succeed is much higher by parents. You know, they are saturated with the media and social media and they have, I think, maybe not higher levels of stress, but just different stressors. And again, you know, their brains are developing just to echo a couple of my colleagues here and what they see around them really changes the way that they grow and develop and those coping skills that they carry into adulthood. You know, our teens are getting ready to go to college. They're going to have more dependence or um, independence, excuse me. um, And they're going to have more stressors. Mm. And they have to make their own decisions. And so it's not only, you know, what they're seeing on the media, but also what they're seeing at home. And right now with that increase in alcohol sales, I think that that will make a big impact. And in a lot of cases, I think it could determine, you know, what path that teen goes down. So I just think that it should be a particular emphasis right now as parents become more aware of how they're coping with the stress that this situation brings, whether it's you know, unemployment possibly, or just seeing the continued rhetoric of panic on the media, you know, all of the precautions that we need to take, it's stressful. And, you know, teens, even though they act like they don't care, they really do. And they're watching. And I guess maybe I could ask the other parents in the room, you know, what are some ways that parents can talk to their kids about this? Like, what are some of the positive coping skills that they can give to help their teenagers process what's going on right now and carry those um, skills into colleges are becoming more independent. Sure. You know, I'll just say one from my perspective. Um, I think parents really need to have many multiple continual conversations about substance use um, and alcohol use in particular, Um, because I think there's just a lot of misinformation. And again, I don't know that that young undeveloped brain, they have a really hard time understanding why an adult can drink and they can't. So just being, first of all, I think parents need to be informed themselves. What does it mean to drink with an undeveloped brain? Well, it means you've really increased your chance of addiction. Why? Because that brain is not developed yet. So when you bring a substance into your body, whether that's marijuana, a prescription drug, alcohol, when you bring that in, there is a good chance your brain's going to like it, okay? So Mm -hmm. you take that substance and it helps you maybe relax. It may self-medicate, forget about what you're stressed out about, um, not be as 
conscious, self-conscious of who you are, maybe make you feel like you're more comfortable in your own skin, but it, it becomes a problem really quickly for a young person. Because what happens if your brain likes it and you feel like, oh, I like how this makes me feel, that becomes your mechanism to have fun, to socially connect, to deal with problems. But what happens with your brain, your brain starts really needing that substance um, to to just get those feelings that you're looking for. So for an adult, when your brain's fully developed, if if you're drinking alcohol and you don't have a family history of substance use um, and you've not used that alcohol as a crutch, it's, you know, I'm going to have a drink with dinner or um, whatever that might be. It, it can look very different than that young person who is now needing it to connect with their young people, uh, their friends, or, you know, to get through a rough situation. So, I mean, just adults having really um, straightforward conversation with their kids, like, this is why it's not okay for young people. It's illegal, first of all. But second of all, it can really change um, your trajectory in right. life. Go ahead. Yeah, communication is key. I mean, just on my own personal level, I have a daughter in college and she was a, she was a sheltered kid. And when she first went off to college, it was like opened up a whole new world for her. Okay. I mean, and she would call, you know, I'd say you call, call us anytime because, you know, you go to a party, you walk in the party, you don't expect to see what you're, what's going on there, right, right, you right. know, between edibles and drinking and different drugs. And she didn't have a clue. You know, so she would call and they would say, you know, let's talk about it. And I, one thing I always stressed with her all the way through school was choose your friends wisely. Yep. You know, be careful who you run with, be careful where you are. So Tammy, I'm here and as a parent, you did two things very well. First of all, you've had conversations all the way up that your daughter was able to call from a party at That's college right. and say, hey mom, <laughs> this is what I'm seeing or this yeah. is what's going on. So she had a safe person to process that with. And I'm sure that helped her make much better choices. Right. Um, yeah. And the second is you were able to talk about friends who are growing up because as I think we all know, I'm sure we've all experienced, um, you know, our friends really do matter right. and, and the choices we make. Hannah, you were going to say something. I was just going to say that something that I've noticed about this generation of teens is that they really value transparency and honesty when talking with their parents. Like, for example, um, just make them aware of the risk factors in their family. Like it might be more comfortable to kind of bury those family issues and try not talk about them. But that really is one of the biggest risk, risk factors is genetics. So just having those open conversations with teens, you know, talk to them, maybe not quite like they're adults, but just having a mature conversation about these are kind of some risk factors in your family. And this is why it might not be a good idea, yeah. you know, for you to try those things just again, because they're going to be more independent very, very soon. And they need to be exposed to those things from you first, because if you don't talk to them, you know, pretty soon they'll hear those same messages from other people and they might not be the ones that you like. You know, I appreciate you saying that being a little bit older, um, this generation is very different. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I most love, and, and I'm going to put from our high schoolers to our 20 year olds, I'm looking at Hannah, I appreciate how much you all really value good information. They're smart. They're oh, smart. Mm -hmm. They're much smarter than I am. And you know what? Our schools have done such a good job educating our young people. Mm -hmm. So if you have those on, honest conversations, they have been, they've received ed education. I'm looking, they received it from taking the schools. They've received it from the high school, middle school about addiction, about how substances change the brain, about brain development. Yes. So, you know, they can make those connections of this is what it does to my body. And this is what my family kind of have has gifted me with, maybe mm -hmm. not in a positive way, but I think that does help our young people make better decisions, more informed decisions, because they want to make healthy decisions. And parents it, can have those conversations about brain development with their teens. I know that might be something that, you know, it's easy to shy away from, but I mean, their high school courses are difficult. Like I know yeah. many of us wouldn't be able to do the math that they do. <laughs> and they've also been really ingrained about reliable and unreliable sources, you know, since yep. elementary school. So if you tell them about the National Institute on Drug Abuse, explain, you know, that if you introduce these substances to your brain, you're significantly more likely to have a problem in the future, they they will listen, even if they don't seem, you know, like they're interested. They, they're able to 
ingest that information and really process it better, I think, than maybe previous generations were. So Hannah, I'm just going to do a shameless plug here. If you want good information, if your parents out there and you're kind of hearing, okay, they're telling us to have conversations about brain development and addiction with my young people, um, the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition webpage, adctus.org, really does have credible, great information. The information on that website, we're polling our reliable sources, um, some that you have just messaged. So if a parent wants to go there and learn a little bit more on how to have a conversation with your kid on alcohol, prescription drug, marijuana, um, vaping, those things are right on the website um, for ease of access and ease of information. Diane, what were you going to say? I see you over there. <laughs> um, going off of what you just said, though, with the ADC website, ADC Facebook also, every Tuesday, there's a what we call a Table Talk Tuesday, and it gives examples on how you can have different conversations with your kids. So every day, there's something different on the Facebook page. So always utilize the Facebook page also. I know a lot of people are into social media, but going back to what Hannah said about having that conversation with your kid, be honest with your kid. You know, there's going to be times I know a lot of people don't talk with their kids because they're afraid of what their kids is going to ask them. And they are going to ask. <laughs> you know, and be honest with them. You know, if your kid says, well, did you try pot? Did you drink? Be honest and say, well, yeah, but you need to understand that the pot that I smoked isn't nothing like the pot that's out here today. Or I'll go the one further. Or we didn't know what we know now. You know right. what I mean? Yep. Um, right. We might have made some dumb decisions when we were younger, but we really did not have that research or science to say this is what it happens to brain development. And and yeah. I think you're absolutely right. Our substances are so much more potent and so much more dangerous Even today. the alcohol content is so much higher now than it was. So be honest with your kid. And once you break that trust, it's hard to get that trust back with your kids. You know, know the laws. Peer pressure is huge with kids, especially high school kids right now. It's graduation time. It would have been their prom time. It would have been, okay, you're turning 18. How many people throw those parties for their kids? You always have that kid that says, well, I don't want to be the only kid that doesn't have alcohol at my graduation party. You know, that's pure pressure. And it's you not can, true either. Just yeah. parents out there, please know the majority of our kids are making healthy choices. I think sometimes we live in this world where, again, we hear media, we have movies, we have music going on, and it portrays that our young people are making unhealthy choices. But I'll tell you, in Tuscarawas County, the That's majority fine. of the kids are making really yep, great right. choices. I mean, we have some of the lowest marijuana uses here in the state of Ohio. Um, our alcohol use is probably the highest of our substances, but it's only a quarter of our high school seniors are drinking alcohol. And I, I mean, it's a quarter that we don't want to drink alcohol, but man, it's nowhere even close to a majority. So I think we need to be mindful of that um, when adults think, well, you know, if they're at my house and I take the keys and, and, and it's a, a safer place. We need to know as adults, we can just kind of trump that and be like, it's illegal under the age of 21. Um, and just don't even open and that the door. Fines, the fines are huge. You know, we would have, if things wouldn't have happened the way we did the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition, we have, um, a promotion. It's a campaign that we do every year around prom and, <laughs> graduation time that's called parents who host lose the most we had what over 500 mm -hmm. um yard signs that would have went out we was going to plaster all of tuscross county with them just to remind the kids and the parents you know if you host that party you could lose a lot you could you're looking at a big fine you're looking at um, possible jail time. You could lose your house you know you might be the responsible one to take the keys away but who's saying that they're not going to get, that they don't have an extra set or they're not going to get that set and go back out. You don't want to take that chance. And you want to be the one to set a good example and let the kids know, look, we can have fun and we can have a party without that. So set example. Um, we're COVID-19 right now. We're mandated to stay in our home. What's going to happen after? 
Yeah, we just mentioned the increase in alcohol sales. What can adults do at this time to protect our kids, to send healthy messages so our kids don't get caught up in, you know, using alcohol um, as a coping mechanism? What can we do or be mindful of? You know, don't, don't change your life. If you're that family, which I am with my kids and my grandkids, it's nice. You have your fires. Okay, maybe you can't have the huge family gathering, but still have them. You know, you, you still got to live. Still go outside in your backyard, which you are allowed. Have that fire set around, you know, do what you can, but in your limitations. And show your kids that, you know, the world hasn't came to an end. We're going to be stronger together. Hannah. Um, I think it's important for parents to, you know, be mindful of the losses that teens are experiencing right now. You know, the loss of their prom, their graduation ceremonies, some trips such as to New York City, you know, just those stressors that they're experiencing. And just to talk to them about those things, have an open dialogue, you know, about, you know, what's bothering you right now? How are you doing? You know, going out of your way to seize the moment and the free time that you now have to do things together, go on a walk. I just, I think that it's an opportunity, you know, for parents to have those conversations and to just, you know, consider all the changes that are going on right now. And maybe just even the effects of, you know, prom's not happening, you know, what might've happened before or after prom, if it had happened, like where are those opportunities for teens to engage in those types of behaviors? And now that we have this stay at home order, a lot of those things aren't happening. So even having a conversation like that, like, you know, what might have happened after prom? Who do you know who might have engaged in a behavior like that? It's just it's just a thought, you know, we okay. have the extra time. Well, and you know, you can always too, especially with prom, prom's a big thing for junior and seniors, especially the seniors. Have that open conversation with your kids. Say, hey, you know, get a hold of your friends as parents. Let's get a hold of the school. We might not be able to have a prom in May, but maybe in July or August, we can still do that junior, senior prom. Work with your school. You got to remember that this is all new for the schools too. Yeah. You know, it, no one's in this alone. We're all in this together and reach out. I'm sure the schools would love to have parents jump on board and help. I can't talk for the schools, but I can't see a school saying, no, we're not. And if by case they would, enough parents can get together and rent a hall and still have that junior senior prom. Mm. The mm-hmm. schools are doing a great job too. Oh my they goodness, are. Sure. Yeah, they are. Yeah. You know, for what these teachers are going through right now, it's a whole new way of learning. It's a whole new way of teaching and they're keeping in touch. I know with my grandkids, my grandkids have FaceTime with their teachers and the rest of their classmates. <clears throat> so yeah, the schools are phenomenal right mm-hmm. now. And you know, that's the younger kids. These, the older kids, yeah, they're missing out on their milestones. I've heard some schools are delaying graduation. You know, if don't look at the downside of it, but look at the positive side of, okay, you can't have it now, but we can do this later. So to wrap up today, um, I want us to just kind of throw out, how can we model this well? So um, if we have this increase of alcohol purchasing that our kids are not, I don't know. I think there's just a caution about if people are drinking in their homes, how do we make sure that we're having conversations with our kids around those issues? So that's your language. What's that? Watch your your language. language. Okay. Watch, you know, if you go to have that glass of wine, don't use, well, I need to relax. I need to have a glass of wine. Just watch how you approach it and how you say things around the kids. Okay. And if you're having a stressful day, that's going to reflect back on your children too. So, you know, I think adults have to learn different ways of dealing with their stress also. Mm -hmm. And just modeling good coping skills. Like for example, if you watch, um, you know, a press conference that day and it stresses you out again with that language, like, oh, that kind of stressed me out a little bit. Let's go on a walk and try to decompress okay. or let's, you know, play a game. Let's do something else that's going to pull our attention away from that stress and onto something that we're thankful for, onto each other, onto a fun nice. activity and just, you know, not turning to that substance and communicating that substance as a way to cope with something negative in your life. Yeah. And, you know, we're all human. You know, even as professionals, we have the stress and 
we're going through this right along with you. And I can say myself personally, the stress has been really high lately. And it's just learning how to cope with what's brought in front of you, learning how to take that deep breath and take a step back and breathe and not take your anger out on someone. Nice. So I really like that as a takeaway today. Um, Let's take this opportunity to model well and to help our young people really see healthy ways to navigate through uncharted territory, you know, and and they're going to experience them the rest of their lives. They're going to go to college. They're going to get their first jobs. They're going to have the stress of paying for their house, apartment, whatever that might be. And I think, Hannah, I liked how you just connected that. Oh, I feel a little stressed out. Let's go for a walk or, you know, just putting words to how do we deal with stress in a different way. And if you're drinking at home more than you would normally, to again, be be cognizant of that. Um, Watch that language, like Diane, like you said, attaching alcohol as a coping mechanism or a recreational outlet, because I don't think we want to make those connections for our young people. So mindful of our words, mindful of our modeling. Um, And again, I, you know, we had you guys here for a, an episode back, um, just reminding us that um, there's a huge opportunity here. And reach out to your neighbor. You know, your neighbor might be that single mom with a couple kids that is stressed beyond belief. You know, those kids used to go to school and now they're stuck in their house. Be mindful of your neighbors and reach out and offer a hand. That's a great idea. You know, bring the community together like it needs to be. Use this time to let's be one. Yeah, single parent mom with multiple kids could be stressed out right now even more than we are. <laughs> okay, ladies, I want to just thank you for coming again today. Um, it's always a pleasure to speak with you all. Um, and that's all for today's episode of the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition podcast. Thanks for listening. Uh, make sure you follow us on adctest.org or on whatever you go to to grab your podcast. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Anti-Drug Coalition podcast, a member of the Get Level Podcast Network. For more information, visit getlevelpod.com or find us on Facebook. Download our podcast shows on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And make sure you stay tuned for more great shows that are coming soon. Mm -hmm.